Okay, psychologists are scientific. So now we, we've looked at individual behavior um, and mental processes, and now we're looking at the scientific approach. Um, so we're looking at why the scientific approach is important in psychology. Because, oh, oh sorry, uh, so a, a good recap um, activity I like is you would just project this on the board and then just write two terms that are somewhat related. They could be different in a way or similar in a way and just put them up there and get students to discuss with the neighbor how they might be related. Um, There's a placeholder slide. You can add your own stuff in here. Uh, or you can you can make a specific questions, right? You can add a specific question here. And so how are these things different? So here I wanted them to distinguish between behavior and cognitive processes. What this does is it not only gets them thinking about what these words mean, but then also a little bit deeper about some way in which they're related, different, similar, or whatever question you're asking. So it's a really good recap activity. It takes zero planning, maximum uh, engagement from the students. Um, yeah, and I like it. Okay, traffic lights, color cards. Um, how well can they answer these questions? And so you can just do a quick bit of check-in um, here. You can get them to um, share with a partner as well before you check in with the traffic lights if you like. All right, so basically, yeah, so they hold up a green if they get it, a yellow if they're not sure, and a red if they've got no idea, okay? For each of those questions. So we watch a TED Talk. Uh, this is 15 minutes, so it's on the long side, but um, it's quite interesting. Uh, what I would do is get them, as they're watching it, give them some focus questions so that they are focused on the video and that they're trying to think actively while they're watching. And one is what are the myths, so see if they can comprehend and remember and then give them a little bit of a quiz at the end. And what we're really trying to get them here to do is look at why the study is important in psychology. And the second question, the third question here really is uh, addressing the same thing or just guiding them a little bit more into answering that. The answer really here is that the, the studies helped um, disprove the myth. Right, and so that's what we're here we're introducing the idea of evidence. Psychology is an evidence-based subject, and so we need to have the evidence before we can have any sort of knowledge. And these myths came about because they weren't grounded in empirical evidence. Okay, and so then after the video, um, they can you know think, peer, share. Then we get into a problem. Um, there's a real basic problem. This is in the workbook that they complete. Right, they should be able to all solve this pretty simply. We want to grow tomatoes. Does um, fertilizer work? How would I how would I test it? And so that hopefully they'd get an experiment group and a control group. Maybe not by using those that language, but just by intuition, All right? Um, and then a bit of chalk and talk. The scientific method uh, can gloss over this a little bit, um, but you know here we look at it specifically in psychology, right? Um, and so we can talk about how how the a researcher might come about studying a behavior in psychology and using this method. Okay, um, quick chance for a Q and A, and then a bit of a summary. Empirical evidence versus anecdotal evidence, because this leads into the next uh, example in the workbook. There's uh, a list, and that they're related. This is just a very brief summary, but there's a list of types of evidence, and then they just write down is it anecdotal or empirical? Because uh, you know students always want to use anecdotal evidence in the in the beginning of the course, so we want to stamp that out and get them thinking about um, what does the research say. Right? If we're asking answering questions in psychology, the first question we ask ourselves is it needs to become the first question: What does the research say? as opposed to well, what do I just think about that, All right? Uh, and then one question here is what type of evidence is more credible and why that can be something to think about for fast finishes. And then they can answer the guiding question and the critical thinking uh, extension. All right, and then that's the end of that introduction topic. So what we did there was just break down um, the studying in, uh, mental processes and behavior, studying individuals and studying it scientifically. And then the next we're gonna look at a really uh, brief introduction into research methodology focusing mainly on exper uh, the experimental method. So that's next.